The one idea that undergirds everything is what we call frequency. Now, frequency, this is a word you've met before. You, you've done some statistics back in years 9 and 10, even in year 7 and 8. Frequency, as the name suggests, is about how frequently does something occur? How frequently does something occur? So you've gone and you've got your sample, you've asked them all of your survey questions, and then when you have a look at their answers, you want to kind of get some patterns out of them. So here's my formal description for what frequency is. It's how many times... Does you know any piece of data, like how many people in this room are girls, how many people are boys, how many times does that piece of data occur? So that's what we mean by frequency. How frequently is this happening in the target population or in the sample or whatever we're looking at? Okay. Now, it's really important, just like before when we we're looking at tools, like which, which kind of sample should we use? Um, which of these concepts, and I'm going to explain a few more kinds of frequency in a second, which of these concepts you use and you apply to a situation really depends on what are you using it for? Like, what are you trying to get out of this data? What, what will it be useful for? Okay, so frequency as an overarching idea is all about identifying patterns and trends. So for instance, I might be interested in, well, if we had a look at public schools versus private schools, is there a disparity between the number of boys and girls taking, um, taking mathematics, for instance? That would be an interesting question for me. And to work out what kind of pattern or trend is there, or maybe a trend over time, I want to know how frequently the boys and girls are doing maths in such and such and such a school. Okay, so that's what frequency is. Now then, um, underneath these three rows that are remaining, we've got three different kinds of frequency, which kind of just tease out this idea a little more. Okay, so the first one is what we call relative frequency. Based on the name, I wonder how many of you could give me a suggestion as to what you think it means. Relative frequency. Hmm. What do you reckon, Akil? How often something is very good. So that re relative word, right, means I'm not just interested in, okay, in a school, you know, I could say 200 girls do mathematics. I could say that, okay? Now, is that a lot or is it a little? And the answer is I don't know because I need to know that in relation to, like, the number of boys, in relation to the whole school population. If the school's only 200 people, then that's amazing and also somewhat strange, okay? If the school's 2,000, well, that means something very different, doesn't it? Okay, so here's my proper formal definition for relative frequency. Um, it's about, like, frequency as a fraction, or because you can represent a fraction as a percentage, you could do a percentage as well. It's the frequency as a fraction or percentage of the total population. So let's compare it to everyone in this group. So, again, the important question is, well, where is this going? When is it useful? And the thing I just alluded to is a great example. So if I'm comparing different groups and the population sizes of those groups are very, very different, right? I guess maybe we could say, for example, 200 girls do maths. This depends entirely on the size of the total population. So rather than saying 200 girls do maths, it might be much more meaningful to me to say 50% of girls do maths, or 50% uh, of the school, rather, does maths, or 100% of the school does maths. All those kinds of things are giving me much more meaning than just that raw number, okay? So, relative frequency. Now, this middle row, when the data is, I'm going to leave this blank for a second. I'm going to explain the two kinds of frequency that belong down here. And then at the end, I'm going to ask you if you can fill in for me. There are lots of different types of data that you know about. Do you remember this diagram? This one that looks like this? Okay? So you know about a whole bunch of different kinds of data. I want you to think as I describe these next two and tell me which of these you think they apply to. Okay? So we looked at relative frequency. The next kind is called cumulative frequency. Now, when I introduced this data and statistics topic, I actually talked about cumulative frequency as an example of like a misleading graph. Is it like all of it, like, it's like cumulative? <laughs> it's like all together, it's like the end, like the indicator. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. 
I do, I do. So obviously the, the challenge here is, okay, how do I articulate? I get the idea, but what words am I going to use? Here are my words, okay? Um, what you're thinking about, again, is frequency. But what you want is the total frequency. And you're sort of keeping up with things as the um, quantities that you're looking at are growing and growing and growing. So the way that we would say this is the total frequency up to... And including, now I'm going to give you a, um, a new phrase here, up to and including each data point. So a data point is like a specific instance in our graph, such as, okay, let's record temperatures over the course of the year. Okay, a data point might be, okay, 30 degrees. 30 degrees, that's an interesting kind of number. Can you tell me all of the days, how many days, had temperatures up to and including 30 degrees. So you'd add up the 30 degree days and the 29 degree days and 28 and so on, okay? Now, think about this one. When is this going to be useful? Why would you use, because I showed you when you shouldn't use cumulative frequency, when it's actually misleading, but when, do you, when would it actually be useful to work this out? Any thoughts? When might be an actual situation? Hmm. Okay, so if you want to make a prediction, if you want to, again, we talked um, earlier on about patterns and trends. So if you're trying to make a forecast for the future, working out how this thing is working, a, a cumulative frequency graph might be much more useful. Let me give you a particular example. I'll, I'll phrase it for you and then I'll give you the example. So if what I want to do is show progress, for example, over the course of a year or something like that, if I've got particularly meaningful data points that go together, I can show progress um, or I can group together those data points. Now, unfortunately, this word here, meaningful, is very, very vague and it kind of has to be because it could mean a whole bunch of different things. So let me give you an example. You might want to say, okay, well, what's the total rainfall for this year? How many millimeters of rain have we gotten, okay? And it would just make sense to say, okay, well, let's just look at each day and just add up the millimeters. And you're gonna get a number by the end of the year and that'll tell you, has this been a really rainy year or not so much, okay? That's showing progress. Meaningful data points could be all kinds of things. Tell me all of the people in this class who were able to, you know, score a 200 and above on a game of bowling, 10 pin bowling or something like that, right? Well, which is a pretty decent score, right? Well, you're going to count up all the people who scored 200 and 199 and 198, etc. It's very difficult to describe bowling scores and temperatures or rainfall all in the same way, so that's why I just say meaningful. Okay, one last uh, kind of frequency, one last kind, which is what we call grouped or classed frequency. Now, just because we're looking at this table right now, I'm just going to describe it for you, but um, I'm going to give you examples later on in this double period because it's, it's sort of its own idea, but it's related. That's why I'm showing it to you now. The idea is that what we want to do is take a whole bunch of scores, individual scores, and condense them, condense all those individual scores into, well, just like the, um, just like the name suggests, put them together in groups. Um, often those groups are called classes, so that's why it's got these two different names, okay? So if you can condense those individual scores into groups or clusters or, hey, all of you people who are between uh, 150 centimeters and 160 centimeters tall, or all of the people who have scored between 80 and 90, we call them band fives, okay? Condensing those individual scores into clusters, what it helps you see is... Uh, larger patterns become more obvious. So I wonder if you could put up your hand if you've heard the phrase, don't lose the forest for the trees. Who's heard that phrase? I'm actually interested. In Anyone? Wow, really? One? Two? Mrs. Penhole and I were having a bet. I said about a quarter. She said eight. We were both wrong. Um, <laughs> Don't lose the forest for the trees means don't get so caught up in little, little minute details that you miss the fact that there's this huge structure here which you just kind of need to zoom out a little bit and see, okay, there's this massive structure that I need to understand, okay? 